not make it any bigger. All right, so I guess I'll have to do about that size right there. Can you see that, hopefully? Okay, I'm trying to make my things a little bigger. All right, so I take that and replace that f of x with y. And then I'm going to replace that y with x. And replace this x with a y. I'm not sure if you did that. And then you got to solve this for y. So that's where it gets a little tricky. That's where I'm putting that over 1 and I'm crisscross multiplying. And one way I get x times 8y plus 9. And the other way I get 5y minus 7. That's where it gets tricky. Because... I guess you, at that point, you could divide, let's see, what would I do right there? Um, yeah, you know, is this the first one? Can we check out the explanation and see what it does? Because at that point, I'm not sure what they want me to do. So there you go, so they put y like I did, and then they replaced the, the x and y like I did. And then they got to this point right there, the same part I did. And it looks like they distributed x, um, brought the 5y term over, factored out a y. All right. Is that what you did? Okay. And then... Okay. Good job. That's complicated. And then the domain, let's see, domain is, can you go up a tiny little bit there? So domain is what does not make zero for the inverse. Okay, that makes sense. Five eighths. And then range, if you go down there a little bit, range is, yeah, what does it make? Zero for the original. You did. It. So domain. See, look at that. Got some skills. Oh, you had it for both times? Yeah. So you're close. Yeah, you just didn't solve that top part for the original, I guess, or or no, you. That's from yeah for the the inverse one, solving the bottom for the inverse. So there should be no problem. All right. So y equals four x. Easy p. Do you want?
focus. All right, there we go. That's good. All right, so replacing these Y's and the X's. And then I crisscross multiply that. And that gave me this. Y minus 4 equals 4Y. And then I <clears throat> believe they have me distribute that X right there. Like that. Oh, and then of course it's different than the other one. And then I would man, take away 4y. And that gives me 3xy minus 8. Oh, I'm sorry. It's x. Oops. Let's put this back up. Trying to shield that so it's not as bright. There we go. So that's still minus 4x minus 4y equals 0. And then I guess if you took that as 3xy minus 4y and added 4x to both sides, you get that. And then I believe they factored out a y out of that to get 3x minus 4. At that point, divide both sides by 3. Let's write that better. So I would divide by 3x minus 4. So I think that looks like it's it. So you got that 4x, 3x minus 4 right there. I hope so. And then, so then you're not really plugging back in. And, and let's, let's go back to that So I have y equals 4x over 3x. So that is technically your inverse right there. And then the domain, you're finding that one. And then the range going back to the very original, what was the original? The original was 4x over 3x minus 4. Wow, what was that? How did that work? That's really weird. 4y, 3y minus 4, minus 4. Well, I guess so. I mean, the domain and the range are going to be the exact same because this was the original function right here. And then this is the inverse function, almost exact same. So this is 4. Let's see, did I do something wrong there? I think that's good. I mean, shoot. So then, solving that for zero, giving you what four thirds. So I guess if if the domain and range are gonna be the same, that would be that what negative infinity four thirds, four thirds infinity like that. I guess if you could try that, give that a try. Let's see. I'm gonna double check that one while you're trying that.
Yeah, I'm gonna double check that, but I'm pretty sure they are. It might be kind of weird. X equals four y equals three y. We haven't gotten even one right, so probably. Oh, you did already? Oh no. Okay, I'm double checking. I'm pretty sure it was good. Yeah. Yeah, I did it again, got the same thing, so let's see. Not I apologize. Cross my fingers. Yeah, that's weird. Alright. Okay, so y equals negative seven x. I guess, and then the inverse and the original function can be the exact same too. That's kind of weird, but we got it. All right, I'll show you this one. Shoot. So there's the original. Here's the switch. So yeah, that's the key right there, switching the X with the Y and the Y with the X and then solving that for Y. So I'll put that over one, crisscross this, gives me x8 plus 5y equals negative 7y plus 9, gives me 8x. And then I believe they took away this 8x, they add this 7y, and then they factor out the y out of it. So if I take away 8x on both sides, and I add 7y at the same time, like a double inverse operation. So that gives me 5xy plus 7y. And then over here you got minus 8x plus 9, or you could write that 9 minus 8x, doesn't matter. Over here, they take that y and put that out front. And then reverse distribute, so the only thing times y to get this would be 5x. Because that will give you 5xy. And then the only thing that would give you the 7y up here would be plus 7. And then that's y all by itself. This is times this whole piece. So I'm going to divide this whole chunk right here to both sides. And then that gives you what the inverse function is. Whoops. And then domain is what doesn't make that zero. Looks like that would be what negative seven fifths right there. And then the other one if I go way up to the top, this is the original one. That's 
It will give you the range, whatever it doesn't make that zero underneath there, and give that undefined fraction. So that would be minus eight, minus eight fifth. So yeah, there's your there's your your inverse, and then your domain what negative infinity, negative seven fifths, and then negative seven fifths infinity, and then your range. You got negative infinity, negative eight fifths, and then negative eight fifths positive infinity. Yes. Yes, I can for sure. So this one right. There you go. Uh, no, that's the domain. Oh, yeah, the domain. The negative eight fifths, that's the range. Good job. Still negative. There you go. Good job. So whatever, yep, for the inverse. And then the other one, the original, that was what, negative eight fifths? That should be money, hopefully. All right, what's this? What do you got next? Okay. All right, well, we'll see what what it says after this. Then you might be just ready for your final. Huh? That would be sweet. Now it's up. Okay. So let's Check this out. Let's take can take a picture of that original there. Yeah, right there. Okay, perfect. Yes, for sure. Let's check it out. All right. You probably scroll down there to check it out. Alright, so the first one is the end behavior. If you want to go down a little bit. So end behavior, there we go, right there. So it says So negative x squared x squared, negative x to the fourth, degree of four, which is even, the limiting coefficient is negative. So that, that uh, is gonna make us look back at that little chart again. Remember that little chart we had? We've been using multiple times, I believe. Okay. Uh, let's see, B, finding real zeros, all right. 
So multiplicity. This is tough. Let's take a look at this. So negative x squared. so confusing how, how do negative x x plus 2 squared has negative 2 is 0 okay that makes sense positive 1 multiplicity of 2 touches but it's not, all right, I guess that makes sense if you want to go down a little bit sorry I got hung up on that So plug in zero, do the math, get negative four. All right, and then go down to D. God, this is so many parts. <laughs> so negative two and one are the zeros. Falls left, goes up. All right, go down a little bit. down so you gotta plot the y-intercept okay I think we'll probably have you des use Desmos on some of these here okay Let me graph it all right should be doable it's really long. A lot of different parts, and I hope we get right. Yeah, find that picture because we're going to need it. I found I mean, I could, I could text it to you if you want. We've used it like three or four times, I think. So looking at that, so it looks like you're going to have x squared, it's going to be x squared, it's going to be x to the fourth, all right, and then Desmos, definitely use Desmos. This is so when you're graphing it, you know exactly what it's going to look like. Looks like a pretty easy graph. So it looks like it falls on the left, rises on the right. Oh, wait. I think I did that wrong. Sorry. Let's fix that. That's x plus 1 squared. There we go. There we go. So it looks like mine looks like a W kind of rises left, rises right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for that. Found it. Because it has. Yep. This has a degree of four. Yep. Is a degree of four, even, rises left, rises right. So 
So mine looks like at negative 1, 0, and 1. Is that what yours looks like? Looks like to me at negative one because where it, it dips up, it's touching the x axis, comes down, touches the x axis, and, and rises back up. So that's that's right there. And then the y intercept looks like the origin zero zero. So zero right there, or whoops, no, you want to get rid of that zero. Because that answer is just negative one. And then that one is what, zero? And now I gotta plot it. So put a dot on all those zero spots. And then that's, yep, then the y-intercept, I would plot zero, zero, the y-intercept, and then there you go. Yeah, I, I just, I think they just want you to do the x-intercepts. I just see the point one zero right there for the x-intercept. Right. So that's, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yep, I believe so. That's what mine looks like, yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> so many parts. All right, B, it doesn't like B. Oh, you gotta get rid of that negative one because it doesn't cross the x-axis right there. There we go, so just at zero and one it slices through. And then, there we go, that's better. Yeah. I think that will get that one right. All right, let's get this in there. Mine looks like a weird squiggly there. Looks like it's fallen on the left and rising to the right. And that would make sense because that, that's x squared, x squared, x to the fifth. So that's, that's going to be odd, positive, 
So I'm not sure what case that is, but I think that's the case where it, it r falls left, rises right. Yeah. And then zeros where it crosses the x axis. Looks like only one place. Yeah. At two. Yep. And it looks like got two spots where it's right on the y or right on the x-axis, but not crossing over. And yes. Yep. And now the fun part: graphing. That's okay. You need to answer it. All right. For sure. Okay. You sure that's. So that one's the y-intercept, right? So that's going to be zero. Careful. And that's negative two. You put all this away, right? Dot, dot, dot. You know, all the way, right? I can get that out, but I'll put it away. And then that's... Looks like... Didn't give you that option. Uh, That was weird. Okay. Let's see. No, it's negative two. The winer's it. Oh yeah, I gotta do that one too. Shoot. Good call, good save. There we go, okay. Nice. There it is. Okay. Just a little more. My Desmos has it more stretched out. But you could always change the settings on this. Ooh, a log one. Let's see if Desmos. Oh, this is a brand new one? Sure. Alright, there is take a picture of that. Because I know you could use Desmos with logs too. So log two. That's weird. All right, and then go down a little bit, I guess. Holy moly, what? Uh, Alright. So, we're probably going to use Desmos for these. Let me go down on that one.
Yeah, let's try to use Desmos. <laughs> I, this is just like nasty. Alright, so log. Inside the parentheses, you have x minus one. So it looks like you got a nice solid point on two zero, and a nice solid point on five one. That's what I'm seeing right there. And it looks like the vertical up and down dotted line is going to go right through one. If you want to start, there you go. Yep. And you got one point on two zero. So, got it right there, perfect. And then the next one is five one, I get. Or five up one. Ooh, that's seven one five one yeah right there that's it yeah maybe to start all over it's kind of weird so one is the asymptote there you go and then five one right there perfect that looks better <clears throat> and then your domain left to right looks like uh, looks like rounded bracket one infinity is your domain and then looks like range from bottom to top you got uh, negative infinity to positive infinity looks like Hopefully, looks pretty good. Thank you, Desmos. <laughs> it's a good tool. It's very useful. Yeah, they just don't know. I mean, that that saved us, saved you like so much time doing this. All right, here we go. So y equals two. Yeah, it looks like negative three is your vertical dotted line, your vertical asymptote. Do you see? I see a nice solid point on negative two up to you. I would start with that one. So negative two up to. So right there, and now go up to from there. First one, perfect. And then the second one I see at over one up five. Yep. So I'll go to the middle of the graph and then write one up five. Perfect. 
her right oh, wait oh I'm sorry over one up four shoot that one's not great negative three there you go negative two two perfect and then negative one or one four perfect that's what I get then your domain you see it yep because there's no it's going straight down forever and then that curve is going up forever technically yep and it's rounded because of that dotted line there, rounded bracket. That's it. Go forward, not backwards. There we go. Just got one more of those. <laughs> they dock you if you get them wrong, that's for sure. All right, what do we got? Log base four. And then just plain old X. It's like a curving from left to right. So yeah. Nope. That one? Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, that one for sure. And then looks like, yep. To me, I see a point at one zero, and then one at four negative one. So one zero. Maybe it will let you do that if you plot. So plot one zero, perfect. And then the second point is four negative one. There it goes. That looks good. Yes. Oh, yes. From left to right. Looks like you got that dotted line not going through one. Looks like it's going through zero. Yeah, so zero. That should be it. I hope. Yay. All right. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Hey, this is just exactly one that we did. So maybe they're wanting to really like refine the things that it thinks that you don't know. All right. So that looks like Desmos for sure, right? like falls left falls right that's what mine looks like like a big weird looking kind of M so I see two places yep It's 
looks like negative one and one. Uh, well, two, it's not crossing through the x-axis, so you don't want to list that one. That's the one underneath where it's touching the x-axis but not going through it, not crossing it. So that's the two right there. Do you see it right there? No, I see it at 2. 2 is the spot where it, where you were going to put it up there for that above answer, but it, it's not crossing the x-axis there. It's just touching it and then curving back down. And then it looks like y-intercept is 4. Yeah. All right, let's graph it. I think that's just straight going slicing straight through it. Yep. And then you got one zero. Yep. Ooh, not that one. There you go. And then you have one more there, X intercept. Are you sure? That looks like it's curving and then turning down. So not that one. There you go. And then all you got left is the Y intercept. Go back up, check, double check your other answers. Yeah, that's what mine looks like. So let's double check. So it definitely falls left, falls right, touches the x axis, negative one and one, touches but doesn't cross two, y intercept is four. All right, I think that one's money. That's good. Just did that one, so. Pass that knowledge check. Solve for x. So natural law, that's what it looks like. So let's see. Um, I think if you want to switch over, I, I'm thinking I'll show you what you would do. I'm not 100% sure. We haven't done these for a while. Or I don't remember doing these. So I would I would do that first. And then this one I would go um, gosh, how would you do that? Natural log x plus Natural log five. God, I might have to use some kind of program there if you like type that answer in or type that problem in and see what answer it gives you. I, yeah, I don't remember doing that one ever.
I see, I'm looking. So, natural log. Yes, negative T. <laughs> I think, yes. Kind of see how they're doing that, though. It's kind of confused. Yeah. You'd like that one. Alright, I'm not seeing what you're seeing there. <laughs> Silly kitty. Yep. So easy, probably open upward or downward. Yep. X intercepts. Easy. Two and six. No, the one step where it's touching the y axis way down there looks like what negative six. So that's a straight up and down line through the middle of that graph. Yep. So that the equation x equals four. Yeah, that's kind of a just general. And then the vertex that's the very top. It's like over four up to. Yep. There you go. So two a third, that's what, two times two times two, eight. So that would be just eight thirds. Yeah, that's an easy one. Two a third is eight. And then the three on the bottom, you just leave it. So I'd just write that as eight thirds. This one's going to be negative. What, 25 sixteenths, right? So, five fourths times five fourths, and then made negative at the end. There you go. You know, they're testing your knowledge right there. If you would have missed that, probably would add like, uh, oh, we got these easy, remember? I remember doing these. So let's draw a rectangle. I think we did this our, our last session that we met. So the width is two times the length. The height is the length plus three, and the length is the length. The volume of the box is 83. So at some point, if you want to switch over, I could show you what I'm doing. So there's my rectangle there. I got the, the width is two times the length. I got the length, and then I got the height, which is the length plus three. So the height, the width, the length. Or whatever way you want to say that. So timesing these three pieces together equal to 83 gives me 2L squared. You know, let's just use X. 
that will give me 2x squared. And then I still have this x plus 3 chunk right there. Got to distribute, and that gives me 2x to the third plus 6. We're going to take this away. So when you get to the part where you're going to graph, you're going to write that as y equals. That's what you're going to graph. And then we'll use that. Yep. And then we got to use, I forget, that zoom button, I think. Is that what it was? Let's look. Let's get this right. Cause I got it right here. I see it. Minus six x squared. There you go. And then click on zoom. I guess. No, I'm sorry. Click on zero. Shoot. Go back to graph. Cancel. There you go. The zero. And then uh, the range, why don't you go like like four to six? Hit find zero. So there we go. So f what's it rounding to? There you go. All right, I think we got that one. Yeah, we did these super recent, the list of pictures I've taken, these are our last session. So. Cool. Alright, so the domain is the things that cannot be. So I can't have any, I can't have the answer on the bottom be 10 thirds. And I can't have the answer on top be <laughs> negative 5. Why don't you <laughs> so I believe this one is what negative infinity to negative 5 and then from negative 5 to 10 thirds and then 10 thirds to positive infinity I think I'm pretty sure I have a picture of that if you want to look let's, let's double check Yeah, they're saying yeah, I don't know. Let's look for a picture. I know we did these super recent. So if, let me construct that number line there. So negative five can't be negative five. 
and it can't be ten thirds. Those are the, the bad numbers. So all the other numbers you got all negative infinity numbers. So negative infinity, negative five. And then union ten thirds infinity. That's what I'm thinking. Is that what that thing that you had showed? Let's see. No, I didn't have that. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the x, x plus 5 has to be bigger than 0. That's right. So x has to be larger than negative 5. Greater than or equal to. Oh yeah, so they're right. It, it is. It's square bracket negative 5 to 10 thirds and then 10 thirds to positive infinity. That's 100% right. I can see where they got that too. Yep, because the top part is x plus 5 more than or equal to 5, or x plus 5 more than or equal to 0, which gives you x or all values more than or equal to negative 5. That's the square bracket. And then to 10 thirds. Yes, I can. Just do these two. Let's pull up that picture. The first part's pretty easy, right? So decreasing looks like from negative six to negative, no, how about negative infinity? To negative nine. Is that negative nine right there? That looks like negative ten. Oh no, that's right. Yeah. From negative infinity, negative nine. And then from and then from negative six to negative two, it looks like. Two to six. And then you got one more, it looks like nine to infinity. All right, so all the local maxima, if you scroll up a little bit. So it looks like negative Six. Is this the y value or the x value? I forget. Let's take a look. X value. So negative six is one, and then that looks like two, and then nine. Uh, 
Yep. Yep. So rising, what? So that's case two. So n is odd, n is negative. Remember, you're better than me at these ones. So how many dips and rises, right? Total, or is that how it works? One, two, three, four, five, six up and downs, right? One, or do you just count the, the rises? I think it was up and downs. Yeah, I, I have it right here. Hold on, let's see. You add one to it, and I think it's total ups and downs. So I think it's total ups and downs, total rises and falls, plus one. So that would be how many rises and falls for that one. Ooh, almost there, almost there. Where is it? Yeah, it is total rises and falls. So that one add what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you add one to that, seven. Right? It's odd. So all the odd ones including seven? Seven and nine? Or is it just nine? Well, if you, the total ups and downs for that one is six. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Um, well, I know it has six up and downs, and you add one more to that, so that's seven. So I would say seven to nine, I would think. Hopefully. I, I'm, you're, you're better at those than me. <laughs> so. Because total up and down is six, plus one is seven. And then I don't know if you include that. Oh, here's the picture, right? So at least four. The degree is even, so it must be greater than or equal to four. So yeah, it is seven and nine. There you go. Yep.
All right, Desmos. Yes. This one's easy. Got it. Uh, yes. Looks like negative T for sure. So it looks like negative one zero for sure. Another point on one one. You're showing one one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what mine looks like. In your domain. Yep. I think we did these other night too. Let me look. Make sure we get these right. All right. So I got h of x equals 9 over x and then f of x. It wants h of h of x and then it wants f of f of x. All right, if you want to switch over, I, I can show you here. So the first one's h of h of x, which is plugging this into itself. So that would be 9. And where that x used to be, I plug in this piece. So now I have right there where x used to be there, now I have 9 over x. Does that kind of make sense? So plugging this into itself where the x is. And then that gives me... 9 over 1 for this times the reciprocal of this bottom part, which is x over 9. That just gives me x. And then this one, when I plug in x squared minus 2 into x squared, definitely a little tougher gives me x squared minus 2 times x squared minus 2. I still have this minus 2, the original one. This gives me x to the fourth minus 2x squared and minus another 2x squared gives me minus 4x squared. This gives me plus 4. So that final one is x to the fourth minus for x squared plus 2. That's what I get for the, the f of f of f of it. Yeah. Yep. So the first one's x and the next one's x to the fourth minus 4x squared. No, the h, the h0h1, that's x. 
and then the F0, F1 is that x to the fourth. There you go. Yep. Minus 4x squared plus 2. We just did these, right? All right, easy. All right, why don't you switch over? I'll show you. So there's my original. So the range looks like the range is going to be seven thirds. And then if I find the inverse, I do the old switch. So I took the equation, I switch where there's a Y, I put an X where, where there was an X, I put a Y. I'm gonna crisscross multiply. Gives me that. When I distribute, it gives me 3xy minus 7x equals 5y. I'm going to add 7x and minus 5y. That's going to be my inverse operation, which gives me 3xy minus 5y equals 7x. And then take that and rearrange this for a Y. Take a Y out of that. Divide. And looks like I get 7X over 3X minus 5 for my inverse. And then the domain looks like five thirds for your domain. Seven X, yep, over three X minus five. Looks like negative infinity, five thirds, five thirds infinity. That was seven thirds. See that? Yes. Question eleven. <laughs> Let's see, so we got f of x equals 4x plus 3 over 5x plus 2, and the other one is g of x. So it wants you to find f of 1 of x.
So... Man, that's... I'm gonna have to look that one up real fast here. I think where that X is, I put 1 over X, so that would be 4 times 1 over X plus 3 over 5 times 1 over X plus 2, I'm pretty sure, which gives me 4 over X plus 3, and the other one is... 5 over x plus 2 and it wants me to, to simplify this so this would be to get common denominators gives me 4 plus 3x over x for this piece divided by 5 plus 2x over x for this chunk down here. I'm going to leave this fraction alone. I'm going to take the reciprocal of this bottom one and times it by that top fraction. These are going to cancel away. So that first answer is going to be uh, 4 plus 3x over 5 plus 2x. And then the x minus 2 one, plugging into that, gives me the square root of x minus 2 squared minus 8x, which is the square root of x minus 2 gives me x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 8x, which is minus 12x plus 4. And then I don't know what they want to do with that. Just just leave that like that, I guess. I don't know. I don't think they can really simplify that any. All right. So the this is the the g minus this g minus two one. And this is the f of 1 over x. Four plus three x over five plus two x. There we go. Cross your fingers. If you stop this knowledge check, does it pick? up where you left off or does it it does you want to take a break <laughs> I mean is this looks like this is all you have left to do tomorrow okay 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 it's super recent, and then these interest problems, you know, we did those pretty recently, too. Oh, man, you've been doing a lot of math. 
All right, well, good luck with that stuff. <laughs> so good luck with that other stuff. And hopefully, you, I mean, I think those first 12 we did pretty good, so hopefully it won't make you do lots of sections. <laughs> All right. Okay, lady. Just let me know. Okay. All right, good luck. Talk to you later.